Who doesn't love a good comic book storyline, right? We all get invested, we can gather up all the issues, we can read them back to back, page to page, and have a grand old time. It's brilliant, right? Except when it isn't, because sometimes, across the tenure of the entire comic book industry, certain decisions have been made that have ruined the fun for everyone. Cheers, mate. So let's take a look at them. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 comic book story arcs everybody hated. Number 10. Amazon's Attack when Wonder Woman was held in a detention centre by the US government, her mother, Queen Hippolyta, saw her imprisonment as a declaration of war. This inspired the Queen of the Amazons to order her forces to invade Washington, DC. And as a concept, that plot synopsis sounds totally fine, right? But when the first issue opens with Amazons slaying innocent civilians, including children, you know that Amazon's attack was doomed from the beginning. Because Hippolyta acts uncharacteristically cruel, readers naturally assumed that she was a supervillain imposing as Wonder Woman's mother, especially since she was considered dead at this point. Even when we learn out that this is actually the true form of the character, you may assume that the story can redeem itself as it turns out that maybe she was mind-controlled. But no, she wasn't. The Queen slaughtered thousands of innocent people of her own volition. Not only that, Wonder Woman barely appears in this story. In fact, she only appears in the first issue for one page. Amazon's Attack may not be the worst DC comic, but it is definitely a shoe in for one of the worst Wonder Woman comics of all time. Number 9. All-Star Batman and Robin – The Boy Wonder In 2005, DC Comics launched a reboot of the Cape Crusader called All-Star Batman and Robin. With visionary writer Frank Miller joining fan-favorite artist Jim Lee, it sounded like the series could not be in safer hands. But Miller managed to create one of the worst Batman stories ever written. The moment where the Dark Knight introduces himself as the goddamn Batman has been memed to death death, but it's only one of the many absurd moments in this failed saga. Batman kidnaps Robin immediately after his parents die, punches him in the face, and abandons him in the Batcave, forcing him to live off rats. The Justice League are written as whiny and intolerable, Bats has sex with Black Canary while a biker gang they just murdered burns to death in the background, and Batman paints himself yellow and beats up the Green Lantern, because why not? If you thought that that sounds awful, then the original script for this is actually even more embarrassing. In the scene where Vic Vicky Vale struts in in her bra and panties, Miller wrote notes like, detail her bra, it'll drive them crazy, give them an ass shot, make them drool. When you read notes like that, it's not too surprising that the planned follow-up to all-star Batman and Robin never came to fruition. Number 8. Zorn Gets Retconned in the X-Men 2001 annual, the titular heroes discover a mutant called Zorn. Because Zorn's mutation caused his brain to develop into a star, he must wear a specially designed helmet to risk incinerating everyone around him. Believing Zorn to be a compassionate man, the X-Men invite him into their ranks. But during the Planet X saga, Zorn revealed that he was none other than Magneto. Now, at the time, this was a great twist since Mags had infiltrated the X-Men mansion and done so when they were at their most vulnerable. However, the story arc goes off the rails when the Master of Magnetism destroys most of New York and then murders Jean Grey, before later perishing in Cassandra Nova's genocidal attack on the mutant haven of Genosha. Now, since Marvel can't just kill off the X-Men's arch nemesis, we all knew that Magneto would come back somehow. So what did the creative team do? Was this Magneto a clone, a robot, an illusion? No, it turns out that Magneto was Zorn after all, and this means that Zorn was pretending to be Magneto, pretending to be Zorn. And that sums up why so many readers have such a hard time getting into the X-Men. Brilliant. Number 7. Countdown 52 was a weekly series revolving around the DC superheroes dealing with Batman, Superhero, and Wonder Woman, all taking a sabbatical for a year. Now, despite that 52 was heavily praised, the DC editor Dan DiDio absolutely loathed it. Even though DiDio devised 52's concept, he was furious over how little control he had as the story unfolded. According to Mark Wade, who helped pen the story, DiDio would storm up and down the halls telling everybody how much he hated it. As a result, he created the follow-up series called Countdown, which he referred to as 52 Done Right. But you know what? It was anything but. The story is so inconsistent that the average reader would have to read every single tie in to have the slightest clue about what's actually going on. As bad as Countdown starts, it gets so much worse when it introduces Superboy Prime as one of the big bads. Prime may have been whiny in Infinite Crisis and Sinestro's War, but he was insufferable in Countdown, spouting dialogue like, I'll kill you to death! Countdown turned out so abysmally, many big moments like Jimmy Olsen learning of Superman's identity, Darkseid's death, and the demise of the new gods was completely retconned almost immediately. Number 6. Ultimates 3 
If you had to pinpoint the exact moment where the Ultimate Universe began bursting from the scenes, it would have to be the third volume of The Ultimates, which replaced writer Mark Miller with Jeff Loeb. Very simply, everything about this story is utterly ridiculous. Wolverine is unveiled as the father of Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, and he cruelly and uncharacteristically makes fun of Hawkeye's murdered family. Pyro, who is meant to be a reformed supervillain, turns out to be a rapist. Captain America pretends to be Black Panther, and it's never explained why. A sex tape of Tony Stark and Black Widow Lee and the Ultimates decide to put it on full display on a massive screen so that everyone can see it. Not only that, we learn that Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are in a sexual relationship despite the fact that they're brother and sister. And weirder still, none of the Ultimates seem to have a problem with it. And when Captain America, who is actually Ultron in disguise, points out how inappropriate the twins' behavior is, Wasp teases him for it, claiming that he's old-fashioned. What the hell? Number 5. Ultimatum so, Ultimates 3 may have been the first sign of dwindling quality in the Ultimate Universe, but Ultimatum was the final nail in the coffin. The saga begins with Magneto reversing the Earth's poles, causing entire cities to freeze or be consumed by tidal waves, killing tens of millions. In events like this, it's not too uncommon for one or two big names to bite the dust. But during this series, over 30 main characters die. What's worse is that many superheroes' and supervillains' deaths are gratuitously violent. Doctor Strange heads bursts like a zit, the blob devours devours Wasp while comparing the taste of her entrails to chicken, and Hank Pym bites Blob's head off in retaliation. Ultimatum is so grisly it feels like one is reading a horror fan fiction rather than a real comic. Writer Jeff Loeb tried so hard to tell a story that was edgy and shocking, but it's self-evident that he overplayed his hand. Although the comics had some great moments after this travesty, including the creation of Miles Morales in Ultimate Spider-Man, the sales never really recovered, and the Ultimate Universe was discontinued in 2015. Number 4. Heroes in Crisis after Barry Allen died during the first ever crisis, his sidekick, Wally West, became the new Scarlet Speedster. When Barry returned to life decades later, readers assumed that Wally would play a significant role in the comics. I mean, it's not like he's going to be kicked to the curb after being The Flash for 33 years, right? Well, uh, what DC actually did was far worse. When the new 52 was launched, Wally West was erased as if he'd never existed. For half a decade, Wally was nowhere to be seen. So when he was reintroduced in DC Rebirth, fans were beyond excited. However, that excitement turned to horror when multiple superheroes were murdered in the Heroes in Crisis storyline, including Wally. And just to really tick off fans, the story concludes by revealing that the superheroes were murdered by Wally and that the dead Wally was only placed to throw everyone off his scent. But you know what? I feel like a broken record. It gets even worse. The higher-ups at DC then decided to redeem Wally by transforming him into the new Dr. Manhattan. Wally has suffered so many character assassinations recently that it would have actually been better if he was never reincorporated back into comics. Number 3. Heroes Reborn the Spider-Man and X-Men comics were a big hit in the 1990s, but other Marvel properties such as the Fantastic Four, Captain America, Iron Man, and the Avengers were tanking big time. To counter this, the House of Ideas had these characters killed off in the conclusion of the Onslaught saga and had them relaunched in a separate universe. Marvel rehired artist and image creators Jim Lee and Rob Lyford to reboot these flagging franchises under the banner Heroes Reborn. Although some of the series sold well at first, the new lineup was shredded by critics. Even though the storylines were bland and the dialogue was oh, damn right ridiculous, it was the artwork that drew the most criticism. Many of the characters were drawn with tiny noses, bulging biceps and pecs, and absurdly thin legs. Thor's muscles were so disproportionate, his body resembles a sock full of walnuts. And Captain America's chest juts out so much that it's been lampooned for years afterwards. Only a year after Heroes Reborn launched, Marvel realized that the reboot was a mistake and so reincorporated all of the characters back into the main continuity. Number 2. One More Day when the Kingpin learned of Spider-Man's identity during the Civil War event, he hired an assassin to shoot Peter Parker's Aunt May. Left gravely wounded, Peter made a deal with the Lord of Hell Mephisto to save her life. The demon promised to create a new reality where May lives, but it would come at the cost of Peter's marriage with Mary Jane Watson. As a slight benefit to this, he also promised to erase Spidey's unmasking in Civil War from reality. Defying common sense, Peter and MJ agreed to these terms. Readers loathed this storyline as it unraveled 
Paul, Peter and Mary Jane's marriage reversing decades of continuity in an instant. But what makes this story worse is that Marvel could have actually undone it. In the storyline One Moment in Time, it's finally explained what happened in the new reality that prevented Peter and Mary Jane's marriage. It turns out that Peter failed to show up at his wedding because, well, a criminal fell on him and knocked him out. It's also explained in One Moment in Time that Peter saved May's life by simply performing CPR despite the fact that every medical expert, including Doctor Strange and Doctor Doom, said that reviving her was impossible. One Moment in Time could have taken the sting off of One More Day, but it ended up making a reviled story somehow even worse. And number one, Secret Empire. When the super serum flowing through Captain America's veins was nullified, he rapidly aged, turning him into an elderly man. Luckily, Steve Rogers was exposed to the Cosmic Cube two years later, returning him to normal. Since Cap had been out of action for a while, readers were excited to see what the patriotic Avengers' latest adventures would be. So how did Marvel kick off his return in Captain America's Steve Rogers number one? Well, by turning Winghead here into an agent of the fascist regime Hydra. Worse still, we learned that Cap had been working for Hydra from the very beginning. Not only only was this an absolutely absurd gimmick, turning Cap into a super Nazi was totally offensive, since the character was created by Jewish creators Joe Simon and Jack Kirby as a distinctly anti-fascist symbol. Marketing around the event depicted Captain America with fascist adjacent imagery, compounding what was already an ill-thought-out storyline even further. Throughout the event, Marvel also maintained that this was the real Captain America, but it turned out that this Cap was created by a corrupted cosmic cube. The story doesn't mention this until the very end, so readers actually believed that Captain America betrayed his teammates for well over a year and was actively encouraged by Marvel themselves. By the time that readers learned that this wasn't the real Steve Rogers, they were too angry to care. So well done, Marvel. And there we go, those were 10 comic book story arcs that everybody hated. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, Dice with a C, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.